you know, really the fact that this story is being told now was more circumstantial than planned. Um, it's, yeah. it's hard in Hollywood to get any project made, let alone a project that deals with subject matter that is, you know, difficult and um, really dramatic. And There is nothing else to do for them except to make them comfortable. So what are we talking about? They asked me to look into the, the deaths at Memorial Medical Center. The Attorney General's office is focusing their investigation on you. They're suggesting that some of their patients' lives may have been ended. Hey, it's Jim Alexander with Real Talker. Carlton, how are you? I'm good, man. Good to see you. I love the setup, by the way. <laughs> it's a lot more impressive than mine, that's for sure. <laughs> I need somebody on the settee back here, though. That's the only thing missing. <laughs> it looks a lot better, too, than the set on the film, too, which is complete destruction <laughs> everywhere around in that case. So glad none of us are, are going through that. Uh, I've been a fan of your work for somebody from, from Lost, Bates Motel, Rampage, San Andreas. Like, I've seen almost all of your stuff. Nice. You know, and it, it's interesting because because in the sense you have a flair for destructive things, whether it be kind of imagine with San Andreas or, you know, the, the monsters of Rampage or lost the situation of this. But this sort of is a truthful, based on true events sort of thing. How was it for you to incorporate something, not from, in a sense, your imagination of what could happen, but something that did happen? Would it make it difficult more or, or easier on you? Because it is based on actually, unfortunately, something that happened. Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I think it is harder when you're dealing with things that are, you know, on a, it's a, obviously it's a fictional story, but it's based on true events. And, uh, you know, John Ridley and I um, tried to be very, um, you know, we, 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 we strove for a high degree of authenticity. And I think you have to, you know, the, the kind of the fidelity that you owe to true events changes the equation up a bit. And, uh, you know, there was uh, the fact that these things actually happened really had resonance. We went to New Orleans. I remember going and seeing the real Memorial Hospital. And it was such a shock because I'd spent so many times looking at pictures and watching, um, you know, video of the aftermath of what had happened there and seeing this, the hospital flooded and then to actually see the place and it still exists and it's, it looks um, in many ways the same. And, you know, there's just, there's a power and resonance in really understanding that, you know, this story was about, it was based on, you know, what happened to real people and, and the, the kind of difficult decisions and tragic circumstances that arose from this natural disaster. And uh, it was a, it was a different kind of challenge, but one that, um, you know, it just felt like such an important story to tell. And, um, you know, that's that's why I'm really glad that I had an opportunity to tell it. You know, I was curious too, how long did you, in a sense, sit on this story? Because we've had, boy, we've had COVID. We had a lot of stuff since Katrina. I mean, New Orleans in itself got hit also, unfortunately, a lot more after Katrina. How long was this kind of in in your mind, or this, this, this whole kind of concept and show, uh, in a sense, considering we, we had so many more unfortunate natural, uh, you know, disasters in a sense that we went through. And, and was it in a sense timely with COVID too? You see the nurses and the kind of a, a different setting, but similar kind of, uh, you know, paranoia and, and you know, heightened sensibilities. Um you know, really the fact that this story is being told now is more circumstantial than planned. Um, mm. it's, it's hard in Hollywood to get any project made, let alone a project that deals with subject matter that is, you know, difficult and um, really dramatic and, and um, tough like this story is. And, uh, you know, it took a while. There were the, the book was under option to some other producers. It took a while before I could get a chance to do the book. And then Really, just circumstantially, John Ridley and I started working on this in the fall of 19, ahead of the pandemic, and then the pandemic struck. And, you know, it really had a lot of resonance because a lot of the same things were happening in the pandemic that happened during Hurricane Katrina. You know, you had healthcare workers who had to figure out who was going to get prioritized, you know, and uh, Katrina, uh, the people in this hospital had to decide who was going to go first, who was going to get rescued first, who was going to get medical care 
um, how were patients going to be treated? And the same thing has happened during this pandemic. You know, we've watched the same thing. Who gets a ventilator? Who gets a monoclonal antibody? Who gets right. a vaccine? Um, and so I think, you know, as John said to me early on, history rhymes. And I hope we can learn something from um, the fact that we seem to be repeating some of these situations and put ourselves in a position where we do a little bit more planning so the next time a disaster rolls along, we don't find ourselves in the same situation. No question. And yeah, it's just in different settings, but it's same kind of need, you know, when it comes oh. to people's lives, uh, whether it's a pandemic or a natural disaster. You know, I appreciate about this that there's no sort of star of the film, that it's true to life in a sense where, you know, in, in an ER, in a hospital, there's many nurses and doctors and no one's like the main one, you know, in a sense of that. And I think that was very true to life, how how many actors are in this show, you know, portraying the nurses and, and doctors in a sense. Um, was this like a, a goal right away to make sure like, yeah, we're not pointing out one single actor in a sense to make him a star, just have this as a group effort as it would be in an actual you know, hospital and in a situation like this where everyone's scrambling and, you know, all bodies on deck. You know, we felt like there were a lot of important stories to tell and we wanted to focus on not just one character, but a group of characters. And we tried to show all sides of the story. You know, we didn't want to tell the audience how to feel. We just wanted to present um, and advocate for all the different characters' points of view and then leave the audience to decide at the end what they thought about the story. And you know, hopefully it'll provoke some debate and discussion. And, uh, you know, we tried in our casting to be really authentic and, um, and, and really portray in a lot of ways the, the heroism of the healthcare workers that were involved in the telling of the, you know, involved in what happened to Katrina. And we tried to, we tried to really emphasize that in our storytelling. What's the most, I guess, the, the most startling thing that you learned through this experience or anything you really kind of took away that maybe you didn't know prior to it working on this that that stayed with you? Well, I mean, I, you know, as I said, when I read Sherry Fink's book, I didn't realize what had happened at this hospital, you know, that there were, they came back and found 45 dead people. And then they were trying to sort out why did 45 people die? And the mystery of what happened and how there were so many deaths in this hospital was an incredibly compelling and gripping story. And it just felt like that was something that was worthy of a screen adaptation. Mm -hmm. Carl, you're no, like I mentioned earlier, you're known for the flair of, uh, in a sense, heightened, uh, you know, drama and, and, and situations, you know, that kind of affect humans. But is there something more subtle coming for you that you want to do? Maybe like a romance or something along the way? Have you thought about doing something completely different than sort of what you're known for um, in your career that you want to do? Or you just love staying with sort of these these human stories but like on a grand sort of heightened uh, destruction scale uh you know i think that um i don't really think too much i don't really do too much planning about what i want to tell i just you know story i find stories that you know get inside my head and my heart and those are the ones that i want to tell and um you know, so it really just depends on you know what happens next i you know i can't really say what will what will be the next one that will will get stuck inside there but hopefully it'll be something good it's been good for a long time so i have no doubt that you will continue that and it's cool I that can. you can do it on the on the in a sense cinematic big screen and on the small screen you know it's 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 good that we're at a day now that we can tell stories in both ways you know and and powerful things too you know that you you can go to the cinema and see it like uh, on a show like an episode eight episode series like this on apple so uh keep up the fantastic work been a long time fan and uh it's great to see you do uh cool things thanks man i appreciate it absolutely Take thank care. you bye Take care. <laughs>